What's going on, Jerome? So, seven round Vikings mock draft. Now, normally, what we do is we put on the simulator and we grip it and rip it. But uh, you know, we're still going to have that because it's a lot of fun. Uh, but also, we're going to go through one where we went through pick by pick and then sort of retroactively go through and and talk about thinking and you know the decision behind every single pick behind every single trade uh etc so uh, of course we have to lay out the scenario because this is not nom there are rules here so scenario kirk is back on a one-year deal yes the the two-year 90 million fully guaranteed it doesn't work out but uh, one last ride last dance hmm. jj's extended to neil hunter Fortunately, walks. Uh, Dalton Risen resigned. Jordan Hicks resigned, which is really important for Vikings off uh, linebacker depth. Uh, o line depth signed. Now, not a tier one guy because I don't think you would get that because I think all five spots are spoken for, especially with Reisner back. Uh, but, you know, a guy like Will Clapp from the Chargers, Connor McGovern from the Jets, uh, Matt Hennessy uh, from the Falcons, uh, somewhere. Someone where you can plug and play uh, if you needed to, and it'll probably cost you a couple million bucks, and also have Bradbury looking over his shoulder just, just a little bit. Also, Will Clapp is 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 the greatest meme ever, uh, and the crown jewel of the Vikings corner uh, free agent class cornerback Jalen. Jalon, 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 Jalon signed uh, away from the Bears. Now they'll probably franchise tag him, but don't care. Uh, if you don't like it, do your own mock draft with the scenario. So first up. So the Vikings were on the clock at 11. Uh, we did some business with the Saints, and the Saints moved up, whatever. Uh, well, it, it does take away context of who went where, but it doesn't really matter. But the, the Vikings, we get their future second-round pick next season to move down three spots. Perfectly fine with that. Uh, the, the board is relatively flat at that point. There's a lot of players that I feel relatively equal uh, about. Uh, and moving back to 14, Leatu, Leatu. Now, yes, medicals. Major question mark. But if they check out, he's good to go. He is older of a prospect because he's 23. He literally retired for a season and a half after Washington. But uh, him at 6'5", 265, uh, 62 pressures, 13 sacks last year in Westwood. And he's a guy where... Without Daniil Hunter, like you're going to have to have a talisman on the edge. And I think that he certainly could and should be that. Now, ooh, our scenario... Uh, sure, we, we bring back Wanham uh, on a mid-level deal. So Wanham, Latu, uh, Andre Carter the second, Patrick Jones second, getting after things, and the Vikings look to re rebirth and rebuild uh, in the Flores scheme. So Latu uh, is a first-round pick, second-round pick. So this one's going to be a little bit controversial. Michael Penix Jr. Now, Penix probably is not going to be there at 42. I think that he will be a first-round pick, but... I mean, never said never you know, this time of year because I, I think that age, I think that medicals could certainly work against him. I mean, the, the lingering effects of that Michigan game too. Uh, but Penix, I, I know that people would be, boo, boo. But Penix probably has the best arm talent in this class, the way that he turned things around at Washington last year. And, yes, did not look good against Michigan, but no one for Washington looked good against Michigan, especially freaking Washington's run defense, man. Come on. Come on, man. But uh, I think Penix is a true leader of men. Uh, I do think that he has a cannon. I think that he is accurate. It does have to take a little bit of English off the ball uh, a little bit. But I think that he is a guy that, especially since Kirk, uh, again, the scenario, Kirk Cousins is back on a one-year deal. So working on mechanics, working on you know getting the ball out faster, getting Penix more under center, uh, I think all of that can be accomplished working with him for two Full training camps, two full off seasons before he's ready to take the reins in 2025. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Also, I like so make it a move. Uh, the Vikings. So yeah, you know, the PFF thing has a lot of compensatory picks forecast for the Vikings. Probably probably not going to happen. But uh, the Vikings traded a gang of uh, mid round selections. Uh, so. Uh, two fourths, uh, a fifth, and also the Saints' future second round pick. So kept that thing in division uh, to get back into the second round. Yeah, cost a lot. Do not care, but we made it happen. Eh, maybe we pay too much. Oh well, do, do, doesn't matter. Actually, maybe we did give up too much. Ad, again, does not matter because we secured our guy Tavondre Sweat, the nose tackle coming out of Texas. Hook him, baby. Horns up, not horns down. Horns up. Because they, apparently, they get very mad at this. Mm. Uh, but uh, Tavondre Sweat, 6'4", 362. A true blue zero-tech, one-tech nose tackle. 91.7 PFF grade last year. 31 pressures, which surprised a lot of people. So, first off, he's fantastic against the run. 26 stops last year. But 31 pressures. Uh, a guy... 
that quick moving. Like he and Murphy Jr. really solidified that Texas defensive line, one of the best in the country. Uh, did have two sacks last year, so. I mean, he, he does have some plus side uh, as a pass rusher, but just needing a dude who can take up multiple bodies, take up both of those A gaps up front is going to make life so much easier for Hicks and Pace Jr., as well as Harrison Phillips, able to move to a defensive end. So that, that's really important. So the Vikings, you know, Latu, Latu, stand up outside linebacker, Tavondre Sweat at nose tackle, really getting things done. Also, uh, so since so we traded away the fourth rounders, and we don't have a third rounder because of the Hawkinson trade. Eh, maybe I give up too much. Whatever. Wh- whatever. We-, we got our guy. But also in the fifth round, getting our guy at 160, Cam Hart on the Notre Dame. Now, I think Cam Hart, if he has himself a solid senior bowl and combine, I think that he is going to rise, but we'll-, we'll take it at this point. But, uh, yes, another older prospect. So, uh, I mean, Quasey with the analytics just kind of going against type. So, Latu older, Penix older, Cam Hart older, Richard senior. But an 84.2 PFF coverage grade uh, at Notre Dame this year. Only 28 targets all season. Uh, 15 catches allowed, 137 yards. Zero goose at DeAndre Russell touchdowns. Uh, and a 67.1 quarterback rating when thrown at. He's got length. He's got feistiness. He's got versatility. And I think that he would fit in perfectly with what Flores wants to do on the back end of that defense. Uh, second fifth round pick. So... Hawkinson finally got his surgery. Knock on all wood. Hopefully he's going to be good to go to start the season. Uh, but I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know about the tight end depth because after Hawkinson went down, you would think that Josh Oliver would bump up to tight end one. He didn't. He was still tight end two, blocking tight end, had a couple uh, catches. But maybe that's how the Vikings see him as a true blue tight end too because it really was Johnny Munt as the receiving tight end in a two-minute drill as well. Uh, but Ben Sinnott. I mean, gives you a little bit of insurance. Uh, and also, I, I think that he's a damn good player. Uh, 49 catches, 676, and six touchdowns last year for Kansas State. Uh, good speed and acceleration. He's got versatility, lines up all over the place, so he is a true move tight end. Uh, can play fullback and tight end, a little bit more of an H-back. Uh, does need to, to work on blocking a little bit, but I feel like most college tight ends do. <laughs> Uh, but if Hawkinson isn't ready to start the season and maybe the Vikings don't bring back Johnny Munt, although I think they probably will, but I think Senna added with Nick Muse behind uh, Josh Oliver does make sense. Uh, two picks to go, a 179 overall. So we, we got Latu, and uh, uh, again, in our scenario, Daniil left, so we're doubling down on the edge, and Jalen Harrell coming in from Michigan. He's a guy that I like a lot. Now, Michigan is deep. Like they roll deep at edge rusher and Harold like wasn't a full time guy, but I mean six four two two forty two, a true blue stand up outside linebacker, uh, ten sacks over the last two seasons, including six and a half last year. Uh, quick ass first step. Now I I don't know if he'll ever be like a true three down starter, but as a guy situationally who can come in uh, and get a rush on. I, I think it makes a lot of sense. So you got Latu, you got uh, Jalen Harrell, you got Wanham, you got PJ2, you got Andre Carr the second uh, in that mix on the edge. Uh, I kind of like that room, even though I miss Daniel. I do. Uh, last pick. So could have gone punter in this spot. Certainly could have, but uh, Isaiah Davis, the running back out of uh, South Dakota State. Now he has a chance to really prove himself at the Senior Bowl as well, uh, but he's 6'1, 220. Uh, he is a rock. Uh, he is a, a north-south power back, but also quicker feet than he gets credit for. And I don't want to say he's Derrick Henry, right? But Derrick Henry is a power back that has that had uh, quicker feet than people thought. And I think Davis is in, in that mix as well. Uh, 6'1", 220, like we said. Uh, 1,578 yards rushing, 18 touchdowns last year, 6.7 yards per attempt. A uh, big reason why the Jackrabbits had success last year. Uh, and also, um, you know, Senior Bowl. If he works out more pass protection, which, I mean, the, the Jackrabbits didn't really have to do him as a receiver as well. Uh, I think that Isaiah Davis in the mix with Ty Chandler in the mix with Alexander Madison, I think that's a pretty uh, solid running back room going forward. I'm kind of mad now uh, about the uh, Tavondre trade. I, I think I gave up too much. They probably would have gone for one-fourth, but oh, whatever. It is what it is. Go get your guys. And, uh, again, the scenario – Kirk back one year, JJ extended, Daniil gone, a Reisner resigned, a Hicks resigned, offensive line depth signed, as well as Jalen, 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 in the building. So Latu on the edge, replacing Daniil one for one. Penix sitting, chilling, going to be quarterback of the future. Tavondre Sweat uh, plugging up that middle. He's going to be Pat Williams 2.0. Let's go.
Uh, Cam Hart adding some size and some feistiness on the outside. Uh, ben Sinn, it's going to be your Hawkinson insurance. Jalen Harrow. Uh, no, another late round edge rusher getting after things. I think he's he's perfectly suited for what Flores wants to do. And then Isaiah Davis power back. Hey, hey screw all this tush push nonsense. Uh, Isaiah Davis behind CJ Ham run the ish out of the football. Let's go, let's go, man. But uh, that's it. Seven round Vikings mock draft on this beautiful Tuesday. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. You know what to do. Skull production value.